G'day folks. Well, what we have for today is a rather large, uh, what is it, Pyrod brand LCD television for repair. I picked this one up at the scrapyard. Um, the guy on the forklift was just about to pick it, pinch it between the hydraulic tines and crush it and drop it into a bin, but I pretty much parked right between him and the TV to stop him. So, it's all mine now. Um, 40 inch LCD, it's not a 42, it's 40, about the same size as my uh, Proton TV which I'm using as a computer monitor very successfully actually. Um, yeah, Electronics Australia, it's got the makings of everything that's dirty and cheap from Taiwan, although arguably Taiwan's better than China so who knows. And that just looks like it's screwed on the outside. An antenna, audio, component, and the TV itself just has monitor inputs, so it's almost like an after, after the fact edition. <laughs> this panel is probably only designed to be a computer monitor or display monitor for commercial applications, but they've added that extra box on. So let's turn it on and see what happens. squeak from the power supply. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Green light's on. No. Nope. Power supply's trying to start up. Yeah, it's just making a bit of a squeak and then shutting down again. Okay, power supply rebuild. Okay, this thing's pretty simple. Oops, mind the crane. Um, yeah, this thing runs two power supplies. It won't run unless both of them are running. It's got a little safety wire there which tells it when both of them are running. Um, and there's really horrible solder joints across all of these DC connectors. Most of the transistors on the board are dry solder. That one I haven't even taken off. That's the one that goes meep and then stops. This one sounds like it's working, but even then it's just horrible. So I'm going to uh, pull both of these off, re-solder them, and plug it back in again and try it. I told you it was heavy. <laughs> Need smaller batteries for that cordless drill. I think those ones are a bit overkill. I told you it was heavy. You need smaller batteries. <laughs> he wants to carry it out the front and work on his van. But I did say it was heavy. And that's the make of the power supply. It's all Taiwanese, it's not Chinese, so I know Taiwanese machine tools and electronics are a bit better than China. Mm, the panel backlight inverters look pretty impressive. And they're even fitted with Rubicon capacitors. That's pretty good. Can't say I've seen that higher quality caps fitted to something from stock. And this thing hasn't been opened before either. This is just this is the first time it's ever been opened. So yeah, that's pretty good. I'll seal that back up again and uh, give it a try. Now I've resoldered those uh, power supplies. There's pretty bad solder joints on both of them, particularly this wire that bridges the two together and obviously synchronizes or controls the two together at once. Uh, the pin for that one was really bad, so it wouldn't surprise me if it wasn't detecting the other power supply and just going into shutdown. All the caps look pretty good, everything seems alright, so we'll give it a try and see what happens. If it doesn't work, then we'll move on to something else. Oh yeah, this box isn't actually an aftermarket thing. It, it's a uh, plug-in module for whatever region this is to be used in. It's probably a PAL box. Australia uses PAL signal, USA I think is NTSC. Who knows, it's, yeah. It looks like a nasty little tack on thing, but it's actually part of the set. <coughs> it's designed to plug into the main board down there and there. Other than that, it's just a glorified computer monitor uh, with a serial port too. That's interesting. Serial port control as well. So. I'm going to have a bit of fun with this one. Okay, it's do or die time for this TV. Let's go. Hey! 
Hey, panel's up. I don't know. No. We're still having starting problems. Damn it. I wonder if losing connection fried something. Making funny noises, it's trying to start up. Mm, damn it. Okay, the backlight's coming on. Wonder if I need an input. Either that or the digital board might have gone. I've got backlight now, that's for sure. Yeah, you can see it. That's a start, the backlight's staying on. Okay, let's find some signal. Okay, there's not much of a signal, but we'll see if this works. I should try the HDMI as well. Backlight, but nothing else. The panel's definitely lit up as far as backlight's concerned. Yeah. Yep. Backlight works, nothing else does. Little bastard. Um, what else? Yeah, it's going red again. I wonder if it's not getting power to the digital board now. Or the digital board is dry solder jointed. Let's pull the digital board out and see what's happening. Hmm, definitely going to have to buy an ESR meter for testing caps very soon. A lot of caps on this, nothing looks obviously damaged or blown. Um, I'm going to pull it out and just check the solder joints, but since it's a double layer P PCB, uh, who knows. We've got, that's coming up from control panel. That one and that one must be coming from these boards here. Okay, so both power supplies or one of them? No, I think that one feeds to that one as well, but that one is the main power supply that also feeds the control board. So I'm going to do some voltage tests first and just see if this thing's actually getting voltage. Then we'll look at things like uh, capacitors and other shit. Well, that one there looks like it's going a bit hot. It's not even glued down. Interesting chipsets on it though. It's Panasonic, uh, Micronus, Toshiba, Hymix or whatever it is. I don't know what's under that. Yeah, fairly serious stuff. It's just a giant computer monitor with the option of a plug-in pack for AV. And that seems to be tied into that Toshiba IC, which is a TA128ANG. That one's tied into there, which seems to be part of the audio circuit. Um, those are speaker outputs. That's probably speaker or audio processing as well. But the video, well, that's power drive for the whole thing, but that must be video processing there. Yeah, you can see the HDMI plug and everything and the traces all lead up to here. So that's obviously main video processing. Hmm. I'll get this board off and have a good look at it. We'll see if there's anything cracked or damaged. Lots of uh, abrasions on the cover from that cable being pinched between the casing. And a lot of screws had worked loose. So I'm thinking this might even be a portable unit that was used for demonstrations and things. And 
maybe vibrations taken its toll on it and cracked a lot of different things because both of these power supplies were loose uh, some of the screws on this were loose some of the panel uh, mount, mounting screws were loose so I'm wondering if this was carted around in the back of a car as a a, demon, a display panel for a mobile demonstration booth or something like that for shows and things Explain what it I would explain why they bought the cheapest model available because they can just cart it around and if it gets broken it doesn't matter. Yeah, sort of makes sense considering a, there's a lot of vibration damage to this unit. Well, as cheap as these things look, these were actually selling for about two thousand dollars at Kmart. That's kind of incredible for, well, something with. I suppose the power supplies aren't too bad, but I don't know. I'd expect more for two thousand dollars these days, but then this was two thousand and six. So, by today's comparison, I suppose that this would be a four hundred dollar television. It's not even high definition. It'd, be, it'd make a nice monitor. Apparently, they work quite well. Looking at some of the re reviews and information online, but yeah, that's quite expensive. But then again, 2006, I think LCDs were still sort of high-end, whereas plasmas were, or well, standard def plasmas like that one there were on their way out. High definition was coming in, like this one. And LCDs were also taking over. Not sure what the Panasonic plasma's like, how old it is or anything, but we'll probably look at that one next. Uh, apart from that, well, yeah, clean-up time.